Boxing is in a great situation right now. The fights happening in the next couple of months are going to be electric. The fans are finally happy. They're seeing the fighters fight the best of the best in the divisions. We're getting what we want. For the past three or four years, boxing fans have been disappointed. We've been seeing fights get hyped up just to never happen. We're seeing people sit at the top of the division just to not fight each other, AKA Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. But these next fights all the way through July are very, very good. And some of these fights could be known as some of the best in the past decade. I of course have to mention the fight that started this all and that was March 25th, David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant for a super middleweight bout. Very exciting fight leading up to that and a pretty good fight until the last couple rounds. Obviously Benavidez pulled away with it, winning by unanimous decision. Just put a beating on Plant, but we saw Plant was a warrior. And going into this fight, we saw once again, two fighters willing to risk it all, putting on for the fans. Definitely was exciting. Definitely made me a fan of, even more of a fan of Caleb Plant and David Benavidez. But we got to see David Benavidez fighting Can Can Canelo. Hopefully that fight comes through and hopefully by the end of the year. We have this Saturday, April 8th, in New Jersey, Shakur Stevenson having his first lightweight bout against Suchiro Yoshino. He's 16-0, 12 knockouts, four by decision. However, this is his first fight in America. He had all of his fights in Japan. He currently holds a WBO Asia Pacific lightweight title. This is an order from the WBC for a lightweight title eliminator. Now, it's obviously common sense if you know boxing that you know, his first bout as a lightweight, Shakur Stevens is not going to fight Javante Davis or Devin Haney or some top-notch, you know, very good lightweight. Obviously, this is a tune-up fight. I don't see this going past eight rounds, but it's still going to be very exciting. We have Shakur Stevens, who by many could be known as a top 10 pound-for-pound -pound fighter and could eventually take over that whole lightweight division, a division that's very, very stacked. Obviously, it's also in top rank, so... Top rank, I actually like the cards that top rank puts together, the shows they put together. I always enjoy top rank. I was really never disappointed by top rank fights, even though, even the ones that, you know, no belts on the line or just guys we're not really familiar with. I usually am always pleased with top rank bouts. Then right after that, April 22nd in Las Vegas, Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia. 12 rounds, 136 pound catch weight. So gonna be not in the lightweight division, or I guess a super lightweight, just a catch weight bout. No belts are on the line, but this is very, very big. Out of all the fights, this is probably the most exciting. This will easily go over a million pay-per-view buys. It's gonna be sold out. This exactly is what I'm talking about, what the fans want. Two fighters in their prime. Okay, both have zeros. They're trying to protect their zeros, but they don't care. They're going at it. I'm very, very excited for this one. This is the most exciting one out of all the ones I'm gonna be going over. Very excited for this. This one, we don't know how this is going to go. And that's the best types of fights, the 50-50 type fights. You don't know how it's going to go. A lot of people are saying Javante Davis is going to one punch to Ryan Garcia. Could be another other way. People are saying Ryan Garcia, that quick left hook. It could really go either way. I don't think this will go to the decision. I think this will be a knockout. But the thing is, who's getting knocked out? We don't know. May 6th in Mexico for the super middleweight titles. All of them. Canelo Alvarez versus John Ryder. This fight, another tune-up for Canelo coming off that loss against B-Ball. But any fight with Canelo, doesn't matter who he's facing, it's always exciting, always exciting. When he destroyed Billy Joe Saunders, I knew Billy Joe Saunders had no chance. Canelo made it exciting. He made every single fight exciting. Even if he loses that B-Ball versus Canelo fight, very good fight. Always exciting when Canelo fights. And that's obviously why he's always guaranteed pay-per-view buys. People want to watch Canelo. Me, I want to watch Canelo. Even though he's facing John Ryder, who I think this fight won't go past eight rounds again. Still going to be very, very exciting. Then on May 20th in Las Vegas, we have undisputed Devin Haney facing Lomachenko. 12 rounds. This is going to be very exciting too for the lightweight championship because winner of this, they're undisputed. And this is the fight that... A lot of people were talking about for years as well. Devin Haney versus Lomachenko, who were basically the top two in the lightweight division. We're seeing this one's very underrated. Not a lot of talk about this so far. Of course, though, it's getting overtaken by Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia. But once that fight's over, the main focus is going to be this. This is going to be a battle. This is going to be a battle. Devin Haney, a very smart fighter, very defensive fighter. But then when we see Lomachenko, best footwork in the division, best footwork probably in just pound for pound in boxing. But he has two losses. He's not, he took a lot of time away from boxing, but he's, he's getting old too. And that's why we needed to see this fight happen before he got too old. This is another fight. I really don't know how this is going to go. And that's what, once again, makes these boxing fights so good. 
In my opinion, I think this is the most underrated fight happening this year, and that's Teofimo Lopez versus Josh Taylor in New York, June 10th, for the WBO and the ring light welterweight titles. I'm surprised this is in New York. This should be in Josh Taylor's home country in Scotland. Now, I know, of course, a lot of people are saying, which is probably agreed, that he lost to Jack Catterall, but he's still undefeated, and he's still a former undisputed champion. The fact that it's in New York and Teofimo, home territory, I don't know, but I think it's going to be very, very good. I mean, people forget how good Teofimo is. He's a very exciting fighter. Josh Taylor, not so much an exciting fighter. However, very good fighter. Undefeated, once again, and former undisputed. This is going to be very good. This is going to be very good. This is Teofimo bumping up weight class. This is Josh Taylor staying around the same. I mean, this is the bout he has been undisputed in. So, we're just going to be a very exciting fight. And that's why I think most underrated this year and the last announced fight for the year july 25th in tokyo stephen fulton versus naoya inoue 12 rounds for fulton's wbc and wbo junior featherweight titles inoue another former undisputed champion this is gonna be a very good fight but i do have inoue coming away with this i think he's just gonna outbox fulton but still respect to fulton going to tokyo going to across the world i mean japan's far away to fight a dominant fighter in a way, and was listed as a top three pound for pound fighter for uh, many years, for many months. So this is gonna be a very good fight. Respect to Fulton. However, I think Inoue will pull away with the win. Now there's still some fights that us fans, you know, we gotta be greedy with and we wanna see. And that is of course, Alexander Ustik and Tyson Fury. That fight was supposed to be happening. Tyson Fury, I guess, wasn't happy with that. I mean, 70-30 is just not fair to Usyk. But Usyk does not care, does not care. He has the more belts. But of course, Tyson Fury, he's going to sell more. But 70-30, not fair. But Usyk did not care. And I guess that startled Tyson Fury. But hopefully we see that in the near future. And then Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. This fight was apparently rumors. We had a lot of rumors for this fight the past couple days. And then Terrence Crawford puts on Twitter, April Fool's. For that reason, I think Terrence Crawford should be knocked off the pound-for-pound -pound list. Get him off the pound-for-pound -pound list. Fights once a year, and he's ducking Errol Spence. This fight is not that exciting as it used to be, unfortunately. Main reason why is these fighters, they just don't fight. They're ducking and they're just getting old. It's not exciting anymore. We're starting to move on and that's their fault. It's unfortunately for us because this would have been such a great fight three, four years ago, but it's not falling through. It doesn't seem like they're just getting older. Okay, they're barely even fighting to begin with. So that's gonna be unfortunate, but very good fights. Very good state for boxing right now. Very happy. We needed this, we needed this, we needed this. And hopefully more fights, you know, they pull through. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think down below. What's your favorite matchup? What are you excited for? I'm out, guys. Peace.